Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Deborah Sampir. I'm the CEO of Althea. We are a platform and software and tools for um, community networks. And I'm here with Stephen, um, who has a, a network in Napa, Oregon, which is a heavily treed and forested area in the Pacific Northwest. And um, he's going to share with us uh, a little bit about, um, you know, some different types of topology that's worked well for him and, and how we can get high performance, you know, triple digit megabit per second download um, out of even the most challenging environments. Yeah, so thanks. Um, so the network that I'm building, um, as Deborah mentioned, has some pretty challenging topography um, when it comes to point to point. Uh, we have a lot of trees as obstacles. We also have a lot of hills and elevation changes between buildings. Um, and my gateway actually is at a somewhat lower elevation than a lot of the rest of uh, the endpoints that I'm trying to connect, which is always going to be a challenge. And so what I've found is that by pretty heavily relying on strong point-to-point -point links um, and building a lot of meshing uh, and trying to minimize my use of sectors or point-to-multi-point links, um, I'm able to keep speeds at between 100 and 200 megabits per second, uh, at least two or so hops, two to three hops deep in the network. Um, that's about as far as I've gotten so far. So um, with the rest of this video, I'll kind of dive deeper into um, the actual components that I'm using and sort of this formula that I've been testing out as a way of um, getting strong connections deeper into your network. Yeah, I'm very excited to see this. I think um, this gives us some alternatives to just the old, you know, find the highest place on the hill, rent an expensive tower or build an expensive tower, and then everything that you can see is your subscribers. Um, with these sort of creative uh, mesh type links, we're able to achieve higher speeds, better throughput, and um, get more subscribers um, at a lower cost than we were, building more affordably and quicker than legacy style networks. Okay, so this, is, so this is the formula basically that I've come up with that seems to be working pretty well. So for a major relay, I'm gonna have an incoming point-to-point -point power beam uh, 80 megahertz channel width if I can get away with it in one of the cleanest parts of the spectrum. Um, and then I'm probably also going to have a failover point to point light beam either at 40 or 80 megahertz. Um, I'm going to be using the 32x router because it can handle all that traffic. And I'm going to be using CAT6 if the, the cable run is long, like over 100 feet, or otherwise I, I might just use CAT5e. And um, the outgoing is probably going to be a prism station plus uh, potentially you know, a handful of point-to-points uh, point going to other sub-relays. So for a sub-relay, I'm going to have um, an incoming power beam. Now, ideally, that's a power beam point-to-point, point, but if you need to save money, that's a power beam point-to-multi-point point connected to the prism. Um, and then uh, I'm going to probably have a basic router, the EA6350 um, version 3 router, and I'm going to have a light AP outgoing and that light AP is only going to serve five or so clients, right? And then possibly I'll also have a couple of other light beam point-to-point -point outgoings to serve particular clients that can't see the light AP for some reason. And again, separate the spectrum, make sure that the light AP is as far as possible from everything else because it will just completely blow out, you know, its little part of the spectrum. So you want that light AP to be at the opposite end of the spectrum of everything else you're dealing with if, if you can get away with it. So yeah, I've been kind of replicating that uh, versions of that formula over and over in different parts of my network and it's, it's performing well. Um, and uh, the other way that I kind of think about this is like I'm creating these backbones through my network uh, and then I'm kind of branching out from there. So this is an example of a strong backbone link where I'm able to take high speed, say several hundred megabits per second from the gateway and get that speed deep into the network. So I want all of my primary links to be power beam point to points, 80 megahertz in that kind of ideal 45 to 55 signal strength uh, with low delta and the cleanest part of the spectrum that's available. And at my first major relay, I'm using the 32X router and then another outgoing power beam point to point with the same specs. And then on my sub relay, I've got an incoming power beam and I might be able to get away with the basic router there, um, or I might still use the, the upgraded 32X router if there's a lot of clients there. And so now off the major relay, 
I can um, add a prism station outgoing, point to multipoint sector. And off that, I can probably get 15 to 20 or so clients. Um, and then from the sub relay, I can add a light AP outgoing, point to multipoint sector. And off that, I'm going to keep it at maybe five or so clients, between five and 10. So here's an example of a standard kind of Y-shaped configuration where I'm going from uh, a major relay or possibly directly from the gateway to uh, a couple of sub relays. And um, so I'm using, again, the power beam point-to-point -point links for that. And then off of each of these sub relays, if I'm able to, I'm going to add a light beam point-to-point -point and connect them like that. Um, so that means that uh, I now have a meshed failover for both of these sub relays. Each one is connecting to each other. But in the real world, it's often the case that you aren't able to actually connect two sub relays directly. So in that case, I would turn to endpoint meshing. So here's another example of how I'm going to connect a major relay to a sub relay, or possibly even a gateway directly to a sub relay. And so again, I'm going to rely on the power beam point to point uh, for the strong backhaul link. And then from the sub relay, let's say I have uh, one client, uh, one endpoint client who's connected via light beam point to point like that. And then maybe off of my second sub relay, I get another uh, light beam point to point client like that. So what I'm going to want to do here is connect these two endpoints at another light beam point to point to connect them like that. And so in this case, uh, the green line there is acting as a failover or a mesh of these two different sub relays, right? So let's say one of the big primary links, the blue ones goes down. Well, everything is still connected because I have that green mesh or failover link there. Um, everybody at sub relay one is still connected through all the way to the gateway. Now, chances are it's a bit slower and it's potentially a bit more expensive because those clients off of sub relay one now have to go through a couple extra hops to get out to the gateway, but they're still online. And hopefully you're able to you know, get the broken link fixed quickly enough where it's not really a significant difference. So I wanted to give you a couple of real world examples of these types of network topologies we've been discussing. So here in my network in Napa, uh, this is one of my major relay links here and going from my gateway uh, to a major relay and that is a power beam point to point link. And then coming off of that, I'm feeding two different sub relays. Now in this case, uh, ideally those would both be power beam to power beam point to points. In this case though, I'm actually doing uh, power beams at the sub relays connected to a prism station on the major relay. That's definitely less ideal, it's not as fast, but it's a way of saving money early on in the network. Uh, so I've got two sub relays there, and then I actually have them uh, endpoint meshed this way. So that green line actually represents, uh, I believe it's three houses um, that are all point to point meshed with light beam. So light beam point to points in each of those. And so by creating that sort of ice cream cone shape, um, basically I'm providing failover for either of the two uh, blue links there. So if one of those blue links goes down, then everybody's still connected. And uh, considering those blue links have been a bit dodgy, uh, considering all the trees and things I'm shooting through, that's been a really valuable feature to have. So here's another one of my major relay links. And then I also have uh, a second one right there. So those, both those red links are power beam point to points. And um, I endpoint meshed them this way. So I had another client there, just got, uh, got him set up with light beam point to points connecting to both of those uh, relays. Right? And this is important because my network actually continues uh, pretty deep back into this neighborhood here. So that entire blue line, uh, which has a fair amount of clients on it, um, that is being backed up or failed over through the green line there. Right? So that allows me to uh, get you know, an affordable way of providing failover for a large segment of the network. Um, and I'm also you know, using an actual uh, client's endpoint to accomplish that. So I'm connecting that one more client as well. Obviously, I could draw a green line uh, just between the two, um, the two major relays there, and that's something I still might add in the future. But uh, by doing it this way, I was able to you know, use a build out that I needed for a client uh, to you know, kind of save a bit of money.